Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I teach high school computer science, and I want to talk to you about how we separate a graphical user interface from its application, from the, uh, the logic of an application. So I'm going to use a game as an example. So rather than writing the entire game as a single class, one Java file, instead we're going to separate it into two pieces, the piece that has all the logic, how the game runs and operates sort of behind the scenes, and then the part that the user sees, the user interface. So these two components have um, sort of their own jobs, and we're going to keep those separate. The game logic uh, class stores the current game state, so it knows where everything is, what the points are, what the statistics are, and so on. And it is also responsible for updating those things. So when something changes in the game, the game logic class keeps track of it. And depending on the implementation, it might also be responsible for letting the user interface class know that something has changed. Now, as, as I said, this does depend on the implementation. Uh, if you think of a real-time game where things sort of happen without user uh, interaction, it's possible that the user interface doesn't wait to be informed, but instead just constantly asks the game logic class what's going on. So the user interface is responsible for displaying the current game state so the user knows what's happening. Also for accepting user input, uh, that could be mouse or keystroke or anything like that. And also for informing the game logic class when the user does take an action. So if we keep these things separate, it makes the uh, implementation a, a lot cleaner, a lot simpler, and it allows multiple people to work on different parts of the project uh, much more easily. So let's write a little fake application that has a separate GUI and uh, logic area. So in this uh, package, which has nothing in it so far, I'm going to create a new Java class. This is going to be my application logic area, which I'm going to make a, a pretend little game for. So I'm going to call it game. And you'll notice it is not a JFrame or anything like that. And I'm going to create another separate one that is a JFrame. This is going to be the graphical user interface. I'm just going to call it GUI. So I have two classes now. And it's important that these things are able to talk to one another. And currently, they can't really. If I make a GUI, it doesn't have a game. And if I make a game, it doesn't have a GUI. So let's start with that. So the graphical user interface, it is a JFrame. When it is created, this init components is NetBeans uh, creating all of the, the buttons and so on that will be in there. And once those are done, I'm going to create a new game. So the game class, I'm going to make uh, a variable called game. And uh, it's going to be a new game. Let's just start with that. Actually, I'm sorry, I have to declare that up here inside the class, but not inside the constructor, because I do want it to stick around as a field variable. So this GUI is going to have a game object that it's uh, basically that it is running for us. So there's the new game. And now I'm going to go over to the game class, and I'm going to make a constructor for it, public game. And I want it to have a GUI. Now, I don't need it to create a GUI because there is one already. When this method is uh, called, the GUI already exists. So what we really need to do is pass in the GUI as a parameter. Let me just go back to my GUI class and change this. Instead of creating a new game with no parameters, I'm going to include the keyword this. This refers to the current object, which in this case is a GUI. So we're going to create a new game and give it a reference back to the current object. Now this particular part is not necessary if the game itself does not need to um, sort of inform the GUI of things on its own accord. It's possible to have a game without including a reference back uh, between the game and the GUI like this if the GUI sort of uh, is, is fairly uh, proactive about keeping track of what's happening in the game. So this is sort of optional, but it's, uh, it's a good way to do this. Let me just uh, save this reference then by assigning it to this uh, field variable GUI. So now game and the GUI both have a reference sort of to each other, and they can call methods upon one another. OK, so let me start with the game. Uh, let's say it has a method uh, called uh, increase points. Super exciting game. And we're going to increase the number of points that the user has. Now let me just uh, make a variable for that. And there we are. And maybe we'll make one more method to decrease the number of points. Subtract one from the number of points. Okay, so we have two things that can happen in the game. Uh, we have one thing that we are keeping track of, the current number of points, and there are two ways that uh, they can be modified uh, by the user. 
let's go over to our GUI and start designing. So I'm going to put a couple of buttons in. One, two, let's do like this. And we'll do one more thing. We'll add in a label at the bottom. So the idea here is that we have a lot of user actions that are possible, and we have some sort of game state that the user is being informed of. So let's call this uh, increase, oops, and this one is decrease. And here we'll say the current points are zero, at least they start at zero. That's the initial condition for this application. All right, so how do these things change? Oh, I'm sorry, let's go back to the design view. If the user clicks on this button, right click, events, action, action performed, I want to increase their points. Now, it's important that the graphical user interface doesn't do the increasing on its own. Instead, it just tells the game that it that the user is trying to perform an action. So, game dot, that's going to call the game's method to increase the points. And then the game itself, the game class is the one that decides how this is done. And we're going to do the same thing for the decrease button. Right here, the decrease button we call game dot uh, decrease points. Okay, so inside of the game class, when that method is called, the points go up or the points go down. The state of the game is changing, uh, but you'll notice that the game doesn't uh, affect the user interface directly, and the user interface does not decide how the game behaves. It only says the user has clicked a button asking to increase the number of points and then the game takes action uh, accordingly. Now in the user interface, oh, I must have made a mistake here. Let me save everything. Oh, there we go. In the user interface then, once the number of points, uh, once this method has been called, the number of points has changed and the screen is no longer showing the correct number of points. And so after calling this method, the user interface may decide to update the current number of points. Now rather than writing in here, uh, um, a line that would update the points. Instead, we're just going to say update screen, and I'm going to write a method that's going to do that. So this is a since both of these uh, methods, uh, well, I have poor names for them, but both of these action perform methods uh, will have to do the same thing, updating the screen. We'll simply make us another private method that will look after that in both cases. So the way this is going to work now, we have a, uh, a label, which again has a poor name. Let me rename these right now. We'll call this one the message label. This one is the increase button. And this one is the decrease button. Okay, so this message label, I want to change what it says. Let's go back here now. I'm going to say message label dot set text. And I want it to say points and then Add to that the number of points that are currently uh, that the game currently has for the player, which is game dot, and I actually can see the points variable. If I couldn't, if that was hidden in some way, if it was private, then there would be I would need to have a method here like get points or something like that that I would call to um, to gather that information from the game. Okay, so we're going to try this out. When I press the increase button, the number of points increases. When I press the decrease button, it decreases. So the user interface is not storing any of that information, and the game doesn't care how it's displayed. Each of them is looking after their own jobs, and then um, our job is to make sure that they can talk effectively to one another, and uh, this allows me to work on the Slay the GUI part and another member of my uh, team to work on the game part. Uh, another thing that this does is if later we decide that this graphical user interface isn't very effective and we need to change something significant about it, I can make those changes and still have the game function in the same way. I don't have to change the logic of the game if I decide to change the GUI. Okay, well, I hope that helps. This is one way that we can separate an application from its graphical user interface uh, by passing references to each other in this constructor and, uh, and keeping those references for later use, calling methods uh, from one method or one, one class to another. Okay, thanks.